Hi guys, today I'm doing a video on uh, the Australian modified M1956 load carrying equipment. The set was a result of Australian involvement in Vietnam. On entering Vietnam, Australia ha didn't have a modern web equipment either in development or in, in use. They still relied largely on the 1937 pattern web equipment which had been used uh, obviously from the Second World War onwards. Uh, which they had modified during the war. They had produced larger basic pouches, for example, to modified water bottle carriers and so on. But it was rather antiquated by the mid-1960s and they needed something new. With the in introduction of Australian troops into Vietnam, it made sense to adopt American equipment and Australia bought M1956 equipment uh, piecemeal. They also started their own manufacture. By 1968, the necessity for various modified components due to a different weapons used by Australian troops become apparent, mostly the uh, self-loading rifle, the L1A1. So various modifications were made. Uh, I have this laid out here um, with the pack and the uh, bum pack, as the Australians refer to it, but pack, as the Americans would know, to it, uh, know it as, um, which would, and it's unusual to see them worn together. Normally, if you were on a long-range patrol, you'd take the pack. Uh, and if you're on a shorter range of patrol, you might use the bum pack from what I understand. But anyway, I'll get rid of the pack for a, a minute and talk about the basic webbing set and then we'll have a look at the pack separately. So here we have the basic setup with the H harness, the two ammunition cases or pouches, the two water bottles and uh, the bum pack to Australians, the butt pack to Americans, uh, all on the, the standard type of belt. This equipment here is all Australian made. Uh, the initial batches of Australian made um, webbing or, or webbing made for Australia uh, differed very little from the American. As you can see here, however, this is this later production uh, equipment is made in a lighter green with a quite a bright green nylon edging, which is a good way of identifying Australian made M1956. The other good way of, of identifying it is to the broad arrow which is prominently displayed everywhere on the brass work as well and I'll show you some more of that on the back when I turn this over to show you the back of it you can see on the front of the pouches here various components of M1956 went into production in Australia at various different times the water bottle is an early example 1965 dated examples um, the Australians did make this is a US uh, compass or first aid pouch which I unfortunately I don't have an Australian made example but the Australians did start making these in 1965 I'm assuming they were all heavily used and therefore difficult to find the ammunition cases are the main component of this uh, which are different from the American uh, uh, M1956 in a, in a significant way the um, overall design is pretty much the same they're suspended from the H harness in the same manner with the strap buckle and clip. You still have the attachment points on the side with press studs for grenades. They're considerably deeper however and obviously American M1956 ammunition cases are around this height. Um, so they can and they're also deeper so they can hold um, SLR magazines with ease. The pull tab is a, more akin to British pattern than that used the larger version used on the American. Uh, ammunition cases and as you can see here unfortunately it's slightly torn but you can see the plastic stiffener there's a stiffening piece in the front uh, before these were introduced the pouches were introduced in 1968 uh, and before this the Australians had made do using jury rigged 1937 pattern ammunition pouches to give extra carrying capacity because the American ammunition cases could only hold or to squeeze two SLR magazines this was not satisfactory and obviously this as a purpose designed solution was a step forward. Um, the H harness is exactly the same as the early American type as you can see hooks on the back rather than the snap hooks that were introduced later which is strange because the Australians did use snap hooks on different uh, components notably the pack so why they didn't use them on the harness I don't know. Attaches at the front again in the same way with the, the hooks. It's otherwise indistinguishable from American made essentially this nylon lining for the padding here. So then we get on to the water bottle carriers. Now these are very much made in M1956 
outline with the stitching down the front, the two press studs on the closure, but in the Australian sort of light green with this bright green nylon edging. One major deviation is the inclusion of a hanger hook, which the American carrier doesn't have. It does also still have the slide keepers on the back there to attach to the belt, but the Australians used, as well as 9037 pattern, they did use some 9044 pattern components out in Vietnam as well, particularly troops who had been out in uh, Borneo, Malaya, and Malaysia. Um, they had access to British stocks of 9044 pattern. They liked the belt hanger on the 9044 pattern water bottle carrier. It was included in the Australian modified water bottle carrier for the M9056. Um, and that's that's the main difference uh, the construction materials and the um, the hanger on the back there. The butt pack or bum pack um, is a copy of the M9061, the larger version, not the M9056. So as I've already shown you, they've got the, the broad arrow on the brasswork there. The tips on the end of the straps are more akin to British practice with the, the riveted tips on there. If I open this up, I can show you inside. It follows the basic 1961 form. The nylon lining and the large throat on there can be bundled in to keep things, things dry. And you've got the hanger points to attach more equipment on the side there and the webbing to attach to uh, clip on more equipment there as well. Moving right over this side we've got another water bottle carrier, another ammunition pouch, something synonymous with Australian uh, kit in Vietnam is the nylon toggle rope which again is, is as commonly seen attached using the webbing loops on the side there with the press studs. One component not actually attached here, but part of the equipment was a bayonet frog, which I'll bring into shot now, which is essentially 9037 pattern, um, obviously for the SLR bayonet. One major difference from the 9037 pattern is the inclusion of hanger hooks, which allow it to be attached to the eyelets on the, uh, on the belt. It's probably easier to show you the belt by turning the webbing set over, which I will do now. We've got the belt, which is standard early M956 type with the horizontal weave but it is Australian made. If you look on the brasswork here you can see the broad arrow. Again that's focus there and on all the slide all the sliders there. There is some stamping on the back but it's rather faint unfortunately. Um, but again it's just a copy as you can see the standard buckle there. It's uh, It's a direct copy of the American design. So there we have it, the ammunition pouches, water bottle carriers, canteen carriers and the, the bum pack. Just to note about the bum pack as well, the M1961 was copied by Australia, uh, it was produced in 1968 so again this setup here is sort of late 1968-1969 onwards uh, to the end of Australian involvement in Vietnam. As I'll go into more detail later in the video, this kit did stay in used for quite a quite a long time after the uh, end of hostilities in Vietnam. So uh, anyway, I'll move on to the pack now and show you that and the uh, entrenching tool as well. So here we have the field pack uh, with the entrenching tool. This would have been the M1951 entrenching tool. An Australian version of the M1956 cover, which I'll go over first and then remove it so we can have a better look at the pack. The cover differs mainly in not having the bayonet attachment which was included on the M1956 which was unnecessary for Australian purposes. Um, they did use the American made entrenched tool cover before but you don't see it very often. Uh, it was common to see before this pack was introduced the Australians uh, typically used the 1908 pattern uh, quote unquote large pack uh, as was known but just the 1908 pack uh, as also used with the 1937 pattern uh, as an expedient until something purpose design came along uh, and this would be often carried under the flap of the pack using the uh, supporting straps crossed over to support it with the, the pick uh, pushed through to to support it there um, you can see the inside of the flap here and I mentioned the green the Australians painted uh, their Prestons green rather than black and again you can see the broad arrow here and the light green nylon edging before I move on to the pack proper, I'll just show the uh, the back of the 
entrenching tool carrier and it's quite nicely dated and not many of my, the components I have of this are but you can see they're 1971 and the webbing loop on the back to hold the two slide keepers it's in really nice condition unissued as you can see uh, with the nylon edging there made of this sort of light green uh, well mid green canvas and the, the broad arrow on the front there which I showed before riveted construction just have a better look at that as I say um, it seemed a shame to move on without showing the, the stamp on the back as it actually does quite clearly show the date so there we go okay so here we have the field pack which is its official designation uh, it was known to the Australians as the Australian large pack I believe rather than, as opposed to the 1908 which had been used as a uh, essentially a, a, an expedient pack um, prior to the introduction of this Australians being Australian soldiers being uh, excellent at uh, acquiring things they acquired American uh, rucksacks and the Arvin rucksack in some instances but uh, you often see the 1908 pack or large pack as it was colloquially known being carried on either a frame or just using the L straps this pack again was introduced like the uh, ammunition pouches ammunition cases in uh, 1968 so again it's a late 1968 1969 onwards uh, issue you do see it in use unpopular as it was it wasn't the most popular uh, item of kit but it's fairly innovative innovative in its design and it was in use for a long time after the uh, the war it was modified which I'll go into in a minute uh, you have the obviously there's external stowage you have the loops here which can take the uh, entrenching tool cover there's also a strap here so you could carry various external loads and there's a little loop there to go around the handle of the uh, entrenching tool. There are three, uh, the, sorry, there are four compartments, two main compartments. There's a large compartment here and a large compartment here, which are separated in the middle uh, by a piece of uh, canvas in there. You've got two side pouches which are closed with a quick release fastener in the style of the ammunition cases, ammunition pouches. On the top of the pack here you have a carry handle. There's also a little window to put your name and details in. As you can see the back, there's a pack board in there. It's quite heavily padded, both where it would contact the, the lower back and the upper back here. The shoulder straps are likewise quite heavily padded and can be fitted in two different positions using snap hooks, which are the same design as we used on the later American H harness, but for some reason weren't used on the Australian H harness. Uh, both um, Shoulder straps have a quick release fastening which means you can very quickly detach and drop the pack which I think is quite a neat feature. Um, again they're styled like the uh, British 1958 pattern and again you can see that there's a mix of American and, and British style fittings. The ends on the webbing here you can see are British style. The buckles are on the straps here on 1944 pattern in style. The clips are American in style and the buckles on the front, which I will show you in detail again in a minute, are American style. So the intention with the packs was that you would wear soft kit in the bottom compartment, uh, carry soft kit in the bottom compartment and carry hard kit in the top compartment. Any of this that contacted your back would therefore be extra cushioning, although let's say there is a pack board. So I'll just turn this over again and uh, I'll uh, just show you the buckles here and then I'll open up the compartment so you can have a look. You can see here again uh, the American style buckles but with a, you can see the broad arrow again, prominent there. So I'll just uh, open up the compartments and we can have a look at uh, each of those. So I've unbuckled the uh, compartments, the flaps. You can see here the lining material is this interesting sort of camouflage material which was used um, on both the a carrier for the Australian shelter or hoochie which I don't have unfortunately but it was also made in this material hung on the belt it's not part of the M9056 equipment but then nor is the pack so uh, I believe so uh, that's an extra item and you can see it's used as a lining material here it's also used uh, for the Australian version of the collapsible uh, bladder canteen the top compartment here you can see the riveted uh, plates for the um, shoulder straps and you can see the interior there it's one large compartment in the top with these weather flaps with eyelets again I'm you could use those to lace it shut if you wished you know, lace the weather flaps across um, the bottom compartment is closed with three straps 
and actually forms this a sort of a, a bottom part to it here which wraps inside this large flap and the idea is obviously you could carry sleeping equipment and here again it's lined with this uh, waterproof material which is uh, the uh, sort of it's a bit worn now but this sort of black and, and olive olive green olive drab camouflage and then you have the um, the side pouches here which you can see um, and they're quite good I think you could probably fit easily fit a mess tin half in each of those um, much like you can on the 9044 pattern haversack you can fit a mess tin half in each of that I imagine that's probably where uh, the intention came from you could fit more as well I'm sure you could fit some soft kit in there as well should you wish or other mess items so there we go that's the uh, the Australian field pack which complemented the Australian modified M9056 equipment I don't know if it was actually part of designated as part of that equipment so uh, there we are so there we have the Australian modified M9056 load carrying equipment um, it was in service this full set with the ammunition pouches etc included saw service from late 1968 1969 through 1988 with various modifications the pack had uh, lengths of essentially lengths of eyeleted belting uh, webbing belt added onto it which allowed more equipment to be suspended from it the water bottle or canteen covers uh, had the stitching removed um, the rows of stitching removed from the front and were made plain after the war after the Vietnam War um, and then you also see examples later on which have a piece of webbing sewn onto the front which could you could use to clip a first aid or compass pouch onto for example um, and in 1988 I believe um, a system based upon this but modified with nylon straps etc was introduced um, but the the modified M9056 saw service so as I say from sort of middle of Australian involvement in the Vietnam War through to 1988 so I hope you found that interesting it's a little bit different uh, something a little bit different and as I say an interesting sort of combination of features of uh, Commonwealth and US uh, design and uh, yeah from that point of view it's interesting so I hope you found it interesting as well and until next time bye for now